This is the Cessna 172. It's been in production for over 60 years and is still one of the most popular light aircraft owing to its longevity and popularity. Throughout history, the 172 has been used for training purposes and most pilots start their flying journey from this aircraft. So far, more than 44,000 aircraft have been built and are used throughout the world owing to their agility and safety. The aircraft remains in production today due to its safety record and never-ending demand. Developed from the 1948 tail dragger four-seat Cessna 170 with primary competitors including the Beechcraft Musketeer, the Grumman AA-5 series, the Piper Cherokee, and more recently, the Diamond DA-40 and Cirrus SR-20. The handling and performance of the 172 proved transformative, and the airplane became the mainstay for training and light family load hauling for more than half a century. It has been called the most elegant compromise in the history of aviation because, without being best in class in any department, its design satisfies a variety of customers. Its introduction was controversial, as the 170 was a much-loved airplane, and the switch to tricycle gear was seen by some as a betrayal of tradition. Around the same time, Cessna also discontinued the Tail Dragger 140 in favor of the all-metal tricycle gear 150. This certainly was a gamble for Cessna, ending production of popular, proven designs but it was a gamble that paid off. The company's new consumer airplanes, the 172 and 182, were tricycle gear designs that had long lives and prodigious production numbers while boasting two of the best safety records in light general aviation. Their production numbers speak for how well that equation worked for the flying public. The 172's design was so clean and aerodynamic that Cessna's marketing department dubbed the 172 the Landomatic because it was so easy to fly and land. Non aviation people probably know the names Piper Cub or Diamond, but the Skyhawk's shape is far more familiar. It's not very stylish or appealing like the Cirrus SR20 or the Technam P2010 but it's utilitarian, easy to fly, very cheap to operate, and combined with its legendary dispatch reliability. The 172 is a solid, reliable, durable, and predictable aircraft with many abilities. The fact that it is a high wing makes it optimal for student pilots as it gives them better visibility and stability. It measures 27 feet 2 inches in length 8 feet 11 inches in height and has a wingspan of 36 feet. Two large doors allow for easy access and convenient loading, and the aircraft is blessed with a sturdy tricycle landing system and a resilient airframe. When the 172 was launched, Cessna used sheet metal construction for the aircraft rather than the prevailing fabric-covered welded steel construction and traditionalists were critical of Cessna's move away from the classic tube and rag design. Even today, when the use of carbon fiber in airframe construction is widespread, the Cessna 172 refuses to abandon its all-metal build and still faces criticism. On the consumer side, metal has many advantages. Repairs are easy, inspections are routine, and the material conducts electricity, so it requires no special materials to make components lightning strike tolerant, as composite airplanes do. For an airplane like the Skyhawk, all metal construction is not only still justifiable, but arguably the better option. The original 172s had an upright vertical stabilizer and a straight back fuselage, which looks dated to the modern eye. 
but that wasn't so in 1956, and Cessna made over 1,172s that year. The following year, they began what would become a proliferation of model changes and improvements, including the long hibernation between the mid-1980s and 1997 that brought the technically advanced Skyhawk still in production today. While the performance and capabilities of the new Skyhawk were substantially similar to those of the airplane that Cessna shelved in 1986, there were significant improvements in the exterior. The airframe was better corrosion-proofed, the weak points had been beefed up, the glass was better, the paint was more durable, the lighting was improved both inside and out, and the panel was redesigned. While the old Skyhawks were notorious for having shabby interiors with plastic panels separating, fading paint, and fabric wearing out, even after relatively few years in the field, Cessna completely re-engineered the interior. New 172s boasted better-looking interiors, which added to the value of the airplane at both ends of the sales equation. When customers took delivery and when they went to sell the airplane. Another significant improvement is the quality of the seats. Seat tracks and restraints on older 172s felt somewhat skimpy and uncomfortable after just a few hours. The new seats are extremely strong, solid feeling, nicely adjustable, and durable. The seat belts attach with a single snap and feature built in airbags. One of the great strengths of the 172's interior is its comfort. While its dimensions aren't generous for all but the longest or widest of pilots and passengers, it is comfortable. For sightseers, the back seat of a Skyhawk is one of the best places to be with the added rear visibility from the Omnivision. Looking forward, control yokes can be seen with the Garmin G1000 NXI Avionics which comes standard with the GFC 700 Dual Digital Autopilots. With the G1000 Avionics, there are maps, charts, traffic, terrain, weather, and a lot more. And for an entry-level airplane, that's a lot of capability. The engine on the early 172s was a smooth-running, horizontally opposed 145-horsepower Continental O300D with a fixed-pitch propeller. By the late 1960s, Cessna swapped the six-banger for one of the most prolific engines ever made, the four-cylinder Lycoming O320 engine, which cranks out 150 horsepower. In addition to a new cowling and motor mounts, the new engine package got an oil cooler. Remarkably, the standard 172 didn't get a fuel-injected engine until the company reintroduced the model in 1996. Newer Skyhawks, both the 160 horsepower R model and the 180 horsepower S model, feature fuel-injected engines. The current S model, introduced in 1998, has an upgraded 180-horsepower Lycoming IO360 engine, giving the plane a maximum cruise speed of 124 knots and a maximum range of about 600 nautical miles. The silky smooth flying manners of the 172 help explain why the airplane, despite its rising price, remains such a popular trainer. It can handle stiff winds, take a little abuse on the touch-and-go circuit from new pilots, and carry two adults with full fuel under almost any condition. Both the aircraft's performance and economics are compelling. The airplane chugs along at an honest 115 knots, burning less than 10 gallons per hour while carrying a reasonable load. The harmony of the flight controls is just about perfect as Cessna created such a stable and light platform. If you want to teach crosswind landings, the 172 is still a great platform. If you want to teach ground reference maneuvers, well, you get the idea. Their payload capability is decent too, 
with a full fuel payload of 560 pounds and a maximum payload of 870 pounds, which means you can fly with two big guys with full fuel or three big guys with some fuel left off. Good luck trying that in a Skycatcher. Skyhawks climb pretty well too, about 700 feet per minute at sea level at max weight. These two things, payload and climbing ability, are a huge differentiator between the 172 and most two-seat trainers. They are, indeed, the two biggest reasons why flight schools choose to operate 172s instead of smaller airplanes. Skyhawks, however, aren't fast. It has a maximum cruise speed of 124 knots, and its maximum range of 640 nautical miles is nothing to write home about either. It's not that the typical Skyhawk customer buys it for cross-country travel, but it is a surprisingly workable machine for shorter trips. Just don't be in too much of a hurry to get where you're going in a Skyhawk as it's no speed demon. In 1974, cruise performance was improved through an effort to reduce drag and improve airflow through the cowling. This turned out to be a greater improvement than many of the other changes. At 8,000 feet, 75% of crews increased from 113 to 120 knots, although owners say the lower number is more realistic and most plan for even less, around 100 to 105 knots. Loading a 172 requires some attention but it's relatively generous in the CG range, and regardless of loading, there are few complaints about the handling qualities. Pitch forces are the highest of the three axes, but good speed control minimizes this. Properly flown, the 172 can handle stiff crosswinds. Improperly handled, it suffers from a high level of landing accidents. It has proven itself as a forgiving airplane that has enabled many people to be pilots who otherwise wouldn't have made the cut. It holds a great safety record and is the safest single with a fatal accident rate nearly three times better than the general aviation average. The things that make a Skyhawk safe are its slow landing speed thanks to its generous and well-designed flaps, its predictable and stable flying manners and its solid construction. With a basic empty weight of 1,680 pounds, 172s have a maximum takeoff weight of 2,550 pounds and hold 53 gallons of usable fuel. The service ceiling is 14,000 feet and it has a ground roll of 960 feet. The 172 has undergone a lot of tweaks and improvements over the past 60 years of production. The basic 172 was equipped with a 145 horsepower Continental 0300 engine, which had a maximum gross weight of 2,200 pounds. Next was the 1960 model 172A, which introduced a swept back tail fin and rudder, as well as float fittings. The fastback fuselage blended with the swept tail looked cool. The 172B was developed for the 1961 model year. The landing gear was shortened by 3 inches to improve its performance in crosswinds and handling while taxing, and the motor mounts were raised by the same amount to retain propeller ground clearance. For the first time, the Skyhawk name was applied to an available deluxe option package. The 1962 model was the 172C. It brought to line an optional autopilot and a key starter to replace the previous pull starter. The seats were redesigned to be six-way adjustable. In 1963, the Omnivision rear window 172D version was introduced. To help overcome the squirrely handling, the span of the horizontal tail was increased by 8 inches. The center strip in the windshield was eliminated, and along came the one-piece windshield, which improved the view out the front. An optional child seat for the baggage bay was introduced, and gross weight was increased from another 50 pounds to 2,300 pounds. Skyhawk models 172E through H featured improvements such as a nose gear stroke shortened by 3 inches and the F model 
came with electrically operated flaps. Many lamented the passing of the manually operated versions because they were more precise, less distracting, and easier to maintain. The 172K from 1971 dropped the famed and successful Whitman spring steel main gear in favor of tapered steel tubes that provided more fore and aft flexing to supposedly improve ground handling on rough surfaces. In 1972, the 172L emerged with an extended dorsal fin to improve longitudinal stability, making it more difficult to enter a spin. Improvements continued on the next models. The Skyhawk was reintroduced in 1997 as the 172R, with average equipment, including the new Silver Crown Plus line of avionics, a launch product for Bendix King that proved to be doggy. While modern for its time, this gear was plagued with problems. Although produced under the same type certificate, the airplane has a long list of improvements, including a metal panel, refined seats, better seat belts, better ventilation, and improved anti-corrosion treatment. The mid-2000s model line brought the most popular Skyhawk 172S with Garmin's G1000 integrated avionics suite and eventually the hugely capable GFC 700 autopilot. While it had its growing pains, the G1000 was a vast improvement over the problematic Bendix King gear and brought the 172 in the world of glass, just like the Diamond DA40. The biggest change was the fuel-injected Lycoming IO360 in place of the carbureted variant used in the last production Hawks. Moreover, there were special versions of the aircraft as well, including the R172 Hawk XP and the Turbo Skyhawk GTA. Perhaps one of the most recognizable and most produced general aviation aircraft Cessna's 172 Skyhawk may also be among the most economical four-seaters to own. Sure, there are others worth considering, including the Piper Warrior, Beechcraft Sundowner, and even a Grumman Cheetah, but Skyhawks tend to be favored by flight schools. This makes more of them, including modern glass panel-equipped models available on the used market. And there are plenty of Skyhawks of various vintages to choose from. Resale prices are at an all-time high, especially for models with engine and avionics upgrades. While the price tag of a new 172 puts it in a different league than its early predecessors, the things that made the 172 an attractive model to begin with are all still there. Most owners report low annual costs and, compared to other brands, Cessna parts are reasonably inexpensive and used parts are normally available in abundance if needed. The selling prices of well-maintained and generously modified Skyhawks can easily fetch close to, if not north of $100,000, while newer ones go out the door with prices of around $450,000. Then again, these airplanes, despite their rivets shining in the sun, are thoroughly modern highly evolved examples of the four-seat entry-level general aviation airplane. Speaking of the aircraft's cons, Skyhawks are notorious leakers of rain, especially around the windshield. Moreover, many 172s have been poorly or improperly rigged over the years. Corrosion has been found between cable strands and this isn't always visible. Things like this tend to be disguised by a new paint job rather than fixed. The rigging and condition of control cables, pulleys, fair leads, and fittings should be carefully checked. The design is also notorious for poor nose gear shimmy damping. Cessna 172s have become a staple of flight training schools across the world as they're designed to be easy to fly and survive less than accomplished landings. Talking about the 172's pros, there's a list that can continue for a long time. Its parts are plentiful, it carries a reasonable load, and it's still simple to fly. These desirable traits merely scratch the surface. 
it's the best at giving its owners a satisfying taste of everything they wanted in a personal airplane. It's a tough, sturdy, and predictable aircraft with reliable avionics, as well as a decent payload capacity and good climbing ability as compared to other light trainers. It's inexpensive to operate and has remarkable dispatch reliability. Its clean, aerodynamic design, harmonious controls, and smooth flying manners make it simple to fly and forgiving of mistakes. Two essential requirements for raw pilots. It is a great, fun flyer, a good short haul, a wonderful trainer, and a solid IFR platform. Without question, after all these years, the venerable Cessna 172 Skyhawk still delivers enormous practical value through its unbeaten formula. It's an affordable, economical, utilitarian, safe, and easy flying airplane that fills a variety of roles. With a focus on safety and simplicity, the Cessna 172 is probably as docile and as easy to fly as an aircraft can be. It's a simple airplane with simple systems and simple procedures. And if any design can claim to be the world's favorite aircraft, it's the 172. If you like our videos, please smash the like and subscribe button. You can also join us by clicking on the link next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.